Hey -o, everybody, Haku here finally with my uh, top characters video for Magical Girl Raising Project updated for including restart because I'm pretty sure I did this video once when I finished the anime. Not after reading Unmarked, um, but after I finished the anime. I'm pretty sure that's when I did it the first time, but I could always be kind of a little bit wrong there. So I wanted to do this, update it, and I at first I thought about doing, you know, ranking my favorite characters from Restart, but then I read the episodes and I was like, you know what, I'll just mix both in together so we can update the standings, and I'll do the same after each arc, I guess. Um, characters I'm not including, though, Fall and Fav, because, I don't know, they're kind of weird to talk about as characters, I guess. We didn't really get too deep into their motivation or origins or anything I guess I guess not uh, but just know that if they were on the list I guess Fav would be at the very bottom and Fall would be towards the top but not quite at it um, and also there was this none of the just random side people that aren't really characters there was this one beard guy I think that uh, Snow White went to see in the Land of Magic but we know nothing about the character so at least for now they're not in it so it's just going to be the 16 girls from Unmarked, the 16 girls from Restart, and Keek. I'm adding in Keek as well. So uh, yeah, that means top 33, and uh, let's uh, get started. At number 33, the very, very bottom is Calamity Mary. Because she was an alcoholic, she beat her child, and she was just overall really, really terrible. But where she differs from other really terrible characters is, even if I don't like them, they had maybe an excuse for being evil or they had some sort of motivations or whatever whereas Calamity Mary was just evil for the sake of being a selfish asshole. She didn't have any of that redeeming or tragic backstory kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, she was a villain with no redeeming qualities, no goodness within her that we got to see as an audience. So uh, that's why I put Calamity Mary at the bottom and for some of these towards the bottom I might kind of go through them kind of quickly because uh, there's not really as much for me to say about them as the ones I really, really liked towards the top of the list. Next up in 32nd place is going to be Minael. Uh, both of the Peaky Angels were kind of jerks. They were kind of just mean-spirited and selfish. But of the two, uh, Unile was not as bad, which is why Minael is lower on the list. Minael took part in tracking down and killing a child that wasn't even part of the reason that her sister died in the first place. I mean, you could go way, way down the line and say, okay, they were both in the game, but that's a very small connection. She wasn't in any way a part of the reason, a part of the reason that Unile died. So, uh, yeah, Minile was the more evil of the two. Whereas Unile was more just a jerk. So yeah, 32nd place for me is Minile. And I still get the two confused, really. In 31st place is a character that, for some reason, is some people's favorite, and that's Swim Swim. Uh, maybe it's just from the design, but I never really even like the design that much. But Swim Swim was kind of the major, if not ma Well, I guess she was the secondary antagonist, in my opinion, when it came to uh, Unmarked. The main antagonist, I would argue, is definitely Fav, but Slum Slum is a close second. She was really, really evil too, and to a point you can say, uh, she was just a child or whatever, but the thing is, that being just a child doesn't give you an excuse to kill a pregnant woman, to kill another child. She killed a lot of people. She even killed her friend. Um, and again, you can argue, oh, she was just uh, manipulated by Ruler's philosophy, but no, especially learning later on, Ruler wasn't even that bad of a person, but Slim Slim just took her ideals and ran with them in the most negative, out-of-context way. So, uh, yeah, Slim Slim definitely had quite a few screws loose, and it wasn't in an entertaining way, more in a killing off characters I like kind of way. So, uh, Swim Swim, 31, uh, pretty evil, and yet she didn't have those redeeming qualities for me. And now Yunael gets to be in 30th place. Like, like I said, she wasn't as bad as Minael, for sure, but Yunael was still kind of just selfish. I mean, she did take part in the attempted killing of Nana and Weiss Winter Prison, and I mean, for one of them, it was a successful killing. So, uh, she did 
take part in that. So she was kind of evil. She took part in Ruler's Betrayal. So she was kind of bad. I just don't see her as bad as the other three that are even lower on this list. She's more of the uh, tame bad guy kind of person. In 29th place for me is Akane. Now for Akane it's a little bit different for the ones that I put lower on the list where she wasn't totally evil and just killing off characters I liked to the point where I didn't like her. Akane to me had reasons for her actions, but at the same time, in Restart itself, we didn't really get to delve much into her character, and I didn't really connect much to her character. To me, she was just a low-level, early-game antagonist for, um, for Restart. So to me, I never connected a lot with the character. Even when we got her episode, I was like, okay, I understand why she did what she did, but I still don't like her that much. So that's, for me, it's just a bag of mixed feelings where uh, she just didn't, she had her reasons for doing the bad things, but the reasons don't make me sympathetic enough to uh, really, really get invested in what she was all about. 28th place is an interesting one with Keek. Keek, to me, is a really, really weird character because... On the one hand, I find it really, really hard to hate a character with a design that's as cool as Keek. She has a really, really cool character design. And then on the other hand, I find it hard to not hate her because I blame basically all of Restart on her. Every death was her fault, really. All of it was orchestrated by her. Anyone killed in the game wasn't actually killed by the person who killed them in the game. And they didn't have to die in real life. She chose to make them die in real life. So Keek, to me, even though she had her reasons, she was always at fault. Her reasons were always kind of hypocritical and wrong. And she doesn't really find that out herself until the end. But, yeah, that's the thing. As good as her character design is and as cool as she is, I still can't bring myself to like her because she's the cause of the death of so many characters I really, really loved. So, uh, yeah, that to me is why Keek is so low on the list. Next up in 27th place is Noko-chan, and this is one that I actually really liked. But at the same time, it's like, I liked Noko-chan. I feel like she definitely wasn't evil in my opinion, and I feel really, really bad for her. Um, she's a character that I had a lot of um, sympathy toward, but at the same time, as much as I do like her and as much as I don't think she was evil, at the same time, Noko-chan's character to me was always kind of in the background compared to some others. Like even in the episode that she was a part of, I cared a lot more about what was going on with uh, Detic than her. Like for me, Noko-chan was a good character that I liked and sympathized with, but maybe it was that her design wasn't cool enough. I don't really know what it is. But to me, when I was rooting for, oh, I want this character to win and survive and restart. Oh, I want this character to win or survive. Uh, Noko-chan was always one of those that she wasn't one of the main ones that I was rooting for to make it. So uh, I guess that's why, uh, even though I like Noko-chan, there are a ton more that I like more. Number 26 is Magical Daisy because I really liked Magical Daisy's design a lot. <laughs> Mint Citrus, of course. Um, and I like the character bits we got to see of her. Starting off, restart with her was good. Her episode was really good. Um, so I liked all we got to see of her, but we didn't get to see that much of her, and that's why I didn't really feel like putting her higher compared to some of the other characters that I liked more, is because even though I really liked her, we didn't get to see that much like we did with some of the others, so I didn't feel as much sympathy for her. Uh, which is kind of a weird argument considering there are other characters, at least one I can think of that we didn't see that much that is way higher on this list, but we'll get there. 25th place is Sister Nana, and like most of the girls who weren't evil from uh, Unmarked, I really, really liked Sister Nana. I loved her devotion to uh, Weiss Winter Prison. I loved the way she was kind and innocent and just good overall. Uh, I felt bad for her death, but her death was, uh, I don't know, I wish she maybe would have made it a bit longer. Uh, I feel like that for a lot of characters though, so I don't know if that's a very good argument. Uh, but she's a little bit lower on this list because she isn't as cool as some of the other characters. I wasn't, again, in Unmarked, I wasn't really just, yeah, I'm rooting for Sister Nana, she should win the whole thing. 
uh, or she should be one of the few that survives. Uh, so she's yet again one of those characters where I liked her. It's just that compared to other characters, she was more on the bland side of things. In 24th place is At Nyan Nyan. I put her this low because with learning about her and her episode, I liked her there. Uh, I liked her a bit during Restart, but the thing during Restart is that she was cool, she had a cool design. I was never totally sure whether to trust her. I feel like, I don't totally remember, but I think I trusted her kind of most of the time. Uh, but I don't know, to me she just, she didn't play that big of a role compared to some other characters. Uh, and her just power and design, while they were all cool, to me they just didn't stick with me as some things that I usually look for or that I find in a favorite character. So she was an all-around good character, it's just that I never really connected with her on any sort of level where I felt like she had that charisma to win me over. Next up in 23rd place is La Pucelle. Now La Pucelle is freaking attractive. She is one of the hottest characters, one of the best looking, one of the coolest designs, and yet she ended up kind of low on this list um, for the sole reason that though she is a top wife who even like I guess in in real version Sota would be kind of weird or yeah Sota was his real name right so uh, that would be kind of weird but either way Lapisel is super super attractive but as a character, there are certain archetypes that I usually don't like in most shows I watch. Like the whole childhood friend. There's nothing wrong with that archetype, it's just that the childhood friend character is usually one of my least favorite characters in almost every show. It's just something I usually don't like or connect with. I guess kind of the main romantic, the main character's romantic interest, I usually don't like that that much. And I think another reason I liked her is because for a lot of these characters that I felt sympathy for and I was like oh no please don't die and when they did die I was so depressed and upset but when Clamberry was ki was kicking Lapiselle's ass I was like oh my god go Clamberry this is awesome so it, it was like the total opposite for Lapiselle I didn't really feel that bad at Lapiselle's death because I thought that Clamberry was so cool so again that's one of those things. I love the design, but the character itself just isn't the kind of thing I'm usually into. In 22nd place is Cherna Mouse. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't like Cherna Mouse in Restart. In Restart, Cherna was probably one of my least favorite characters because we didn't really get to see any of her motivation or anything. She was very simplistic. Uh, she was constantly going after and causing trouble for characters that I did really like. Uh, so there was a lot about Cherna that I wasn't really into, and her power just to grow big and whatever was whatever to me. Uh, but then we have her in episodes, and in episodes I thought that, well, A, her being an animal is really, really cool. The concept of an animal becoming a magical girl is awesome. But in addition to that, seeing the way she interacted with uh, the other character that was there, with somebody's younger brother and all that, uh, I really... Re I think it was Pechka's brother, wasn't it? Um, but I really, really liked Cherna Mouse in episodes, and that made the character for me. I went from not liking Cherna at all to being totally on Cherna's side, wishing we had gotten to see more of her. Uh, and the design was always pretty cool. The design has some parts of it that I really, really do like. So, uh, yeah, Cherna's a really cool character, mostly just because of the concept of an animal being a magical girl. In 21st place is Magicaloid44. Now, I feel like a lot of people always, like, get confused and ask me whenever I'm talking about Magical Girl Raising Project with people, like, wh why do you dislike Calamity Mary and the Peaky Angels and Swim Swim and all so, so much, yet give Magicaloid such a pass on all of that? Yeah, I mean, she did try to kill Snow White and all, but for me, there was something with her backstory. Even back in the anime, I always really felt sympathetic for Magicaloid, and I was always kind of on her side. And I don't even like the design that much. The design's cool. I really like the design of her real, actual human self. But I don't know. There was something about her backstory. Maybe something about her character in general. I don't know what it is, but I just liked Magical Girl from the very, or <laughs> liked Magicaloid from the very, very beginning. So, um, yeah, I, 
I don't quite know what it is that makes me give her such a pass. Maybe it is because I feel so empathetic towards her backstory and I don't think she's really that evil, even though she was totally willing to kill a stranger. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I feel like all the things she did, whereas Swim Swim felt like she was doing it for the hell of it, Minile and Unile were generally mean, and, uh, well, Swim Swim wasn't doing it for the hell of it, but Swim Swim was, like, doing evil things for the sake of herself. Um, and just, she didn't have to do them. She wanted to in order to become a princess or whatever. Uh, but Magicaloid sets herself apart from them where I felt like every time Magicaloid was doing something that was bad, she was doing it out of self-preservation and just trying to stay alive. Like when she was going to kill Snow White, that was just so that Cal Calamity Mary would protect her so that she wouldn't die during the survival game. So I guess that's it. I guess it's the concept of I felt like Magicaloid was always just trying to survive, so I'm more willing to forgive some of the evil stuff she did. In 20th place, making it to the top 20, is uh, Masked Wonder. Now for Masked Wonder, she was my favorite at the beginning of Restart, all of you, during my read-throughs. Uh, I'm pretty sure I made it clear she was my favorite. I absolutely loved Masked Wonder, and from her design, I didn't think I was going to. Uh, but she was like an early game favorite. And then, of course, probably because she was an early game favorite, uh, she was one of the first ones to die, so we didn't get to see as much of her as other characters. And as other characters developed, she kind of fell more and more out of mind because of how much I loved those other characters and wanted them to survive. Uh, so if she would have made it longer, she'd probably be higher up on this list. And her episode was good, too, in episodes, but even then, that was more... Nemorine than her, like where I was really excited for Nemorine, it was more that than uh, the excitement that I had to see Masked Wonder again. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's about it for her character. A uh, character that I liked at the beginning, but we just didn't get enough time with. In 19th place for me is Top Speed. Now I know, again, that's a lot of your favorites. Um, but Top Speed is so low on the list for me because there was this weird thing that happened where I absolutely loved her personality and her character. I thought it was one of the best, and I loved her design. I think her design still to this day is one of the best. Uh, her power was just kind of whatever, I guess, to me. Uh, but the thing with her is that I never really felt like her design and her personality matched very much to the point where she didn't feel like she had that much identity to me as a character. Uh, that's just me, maybe, but I just feel like her design and her personality were a bit at odds with each other at times and I really really did like her but also throughout um, getting to read Restart and getting to read more of Unmarked after she had gone I felt like there were a lot of other characters that I had a clear sense of who they were and not only that I identified with them more I didn't identify that much with Top Speed even though she was really really cool um, so yeah, that's why I guess that she's at 19th, because she is really, really cool. But on the other hand, I didn't personally identify with her that much. In 18th place is Yumenashima Genosaiko. She was cool in every way. I really, really loved her character. I thought her part in episodes was good. I thought she had a cool power, a cool design. Everything she did in Restart was awesome. So really, we're getting to the point where... I don't really have any particular fault in her character. I really, really liked her. Uh, it's just that there are other characters I happen to like more, even though I like everything about her. Uh, and I think I would like her more if we got more time with her, but she only made it about, like, what, maybe halfway? Maybe not even halfway through Restart. So we didn't get a ton of screen time with her. Uh, but I think if we got more, I would like her even more than I already do. In 17th place is Ruler, and I always really, really liked Ruler. Now, I thought at the beginning that she was just going to be, you know, an early game antagonist, uh, and that was just going to be it, and they were going to move on to further antagonists later on, and that was kind of what happened. But I thought they did something super... Whoever's writing this, they did something super, super creative with Ruler, where we've seen time and time again where there were these misunderstood villains who were only doing bad stuff because they work for an evil boss. Well, with Ruler's group, we got to see the actual opposite. We got to see a misunderstood boss who just kind of has 
evil people work, with the exception of Tom, obviously, with evil bad people working un under her. And with, like, Magicaloid, where I was like, I can forgive the bad stuff Magicaloid tried to do because she was just fighting for her own self-preservation. She was just fighting for survival. I can really, really forgive Ruler then because, A, she didn't really do anything bad. I mean, she was trying to um, take the candies from Snow White, which would have led to her death, but she wasn't trying to actually kill anyone herself. But on top of that, the big thing is that she did it for the sake of others. She was like, I can sacrifice one stranger to ensure the lives of the people around me. So while she was doing a bad thing, as a character I can forgive it because in the end her heart was in the right place and I absolutely loved everything we got to see of her with her interactions with Tama and different things. Uh, did she really do anything in episodes? I don't totally remember. Um, except I think that one thing where Swim Swim was going to the flower viewing festival or something with her, uh, or just to do a flower viewing or whatever. Uh, but I liked Ruler's backstory a lot. I felt sympathy for the character. Uh, and the design's really, really awesome. So yeah, Ruler is a character that I always liked. Um, and I kind of wish I could put her higher, but there are characters I like even more. And 16th place for me is kind of another fan favorite, Fla. Um, Fla, to me, she... <laughs> I, I like everything about her. I like her story. I like her character design. In the end, she turned out to be good, which is great. But on the other hand, the reason she's so low is... For most of um, for most of restart, I wasn't necessarily cheering her on because I didn't really trust her. Whenever we were bringing up the concept of whoever the traitor might be, Flo was always kind of up there for me. I never really totally trusted Flo, so I feel like that's the reason why she's kind of lower on the list. That and her power is the most useless thing in the world. The most dumb power somebody could have especially considering she's so close with Shadow Gale, who could literally replicate Fle's own power at any time. She could get any chair and turn it into a super fast wheelchair by adding things to it with her power. So that, like, on the one hand, Fle's power wouldn't have been that cool. But considering that Shadow Gale's power exists, it becomes infinitely less cool because it can easily just be replicated. And then considering she is friends with Shadow Gale who could make her a thousand special wheelchairs, it just, it, it, it makes her power really, really not good. Um, which is why I kept theorizing that she had a better, different power, but I was wrong. But uh, yeah, her design's cool, her character's cool. But uh, I didn't totally trust her is the main gist of why she's kind of high up, but not that high up on the list. In 15th place, making it to the top 15 is Mio Kata no Nako. You guys know I love my Weeaboo Shrine Maiden, uh, my Weeaboo Miko. So uh, her design is awesome. One of my favorite designs overall. Her character and personality is completely great. I love all of her interactions with Pechka and Clientail and Rionetta. Uh, her with the, her dragon and her goblin were so cute. Um, her power is cool. I like her power a lot. So there were just so many things that stacked on top of each other. I loved the character. Her death made me very sad. Uh, so yeah, this is again one of those characters where all around there's nothing to dislike really. Uh, there are just other characters I happen to like more. Um, and I guess maybe if I could think about it, a part of it is maybe that when I'm thinking back and looking at some of my characters that are higher up than her, they're sort of the cooler, calmer, more level-headed characters, whereas she was more of the lash la loud, brash, and abrasive type. What on earth was I saying there? Uh, but either way, I guess that's kind of it. I absolutely loved her character, but there were just other ones I happened to like more. In 14th place is Pechka. Now, Pechka is another kind of interesting one because where all these other characters, I'm like, I find no fault in them. There are just other ones I like more. With Pechka, there were a lot of faults there. Um, for most of the story, I thought that Pechka was a good character, but not really great. And what boosted her up to being one of my favorites up to number 14 is the ending to her story. Her death was one of the best in the entire series. I would argue possibly the best in the entire series. She was just so good 
right at the very end that that boosted her character up even though there are other characters whose designs or personalities I liked more uh, she had the best ending for her story that was told so uh yeah that's why Petchka's up as high as she is number 13 for me is yet another fan favorite with Lapis Lazuline uh, she was a complete badass and I really loved basically everything about her character but I feel like I didn't really love her as much as it seems like most of you did um, I thought she was a very good character, but not like the absolute best. Uh, and another thing with her for me is I honestly felt that she probably shouldn't have died. I don't know. She was just so absolutely overwhelmingly badass, um, so good at combat that her dying to me always felt like, why did that even happen? Why did she have to die here? Um, so yeah, maybe that's it for me. But I, I don't know. I really, really liked everything about her. I loved her relationship with Detic Bell, and her relationship with uh, Clamberry was so good. Uh, not Clamberry, uh, Melville. Uh, her relationship with Melville, and especially it all coming to a head there at the end when they fought, I thought that that was one of the better stories told within Restart. Um, so again, being up at 13th out of these 33 characters when so many of them are so good is still a good thing, uh, but she wasn't within the top of the top for me. In 12th place for me is Snow White. Now Snow White's a great main character, um, though I usually don't like the main characters that much, especially in, um, well, I guess not especially in anime, just in anything in general. I'm usually more of a side character with good development kind of guy. I usually end up thinking, okay, we've seen enough of the main character, give some other characters some time to breathe. That's why I like ensemble cast shows and series so much. Um, I actually think the anime handled Snow White's development better than the light novels did through Unmarked, but either way, she just, in general, got great development. I think she has a great design. I love how it uh, sort of harkens back to other older traditional magical girls. Uh, and how that's used to tell this non-traditional story. Uh, I do think that we need more blonde Snow White like she's actually supposed to be in the light novels, and I don't know why they made her all pink. Well, I mean, I do know why. It's because to make her look like Madoka and to add in all of that for the anime. But uh, blonde Snow White is the way Snow White is supposed to be. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's random point. But either way, yeah, Lover is a main character, it's just main characters aren't always my thing, and there are characters that I personally felt more endeared to. 11th place for me is Weiss Winter Prison, and she's kind of a character that's fallen in the list a bit. I'm pretty sure after Unmarked, I put her at, like, my third favorite character in all of Unmarked. And now here after Restart, she is kind of taking a dive in popularity with me. Um, but I still think she's awesome, that's why she almost made the top 10. She's really, really cool. The character design's amazing. Her power is one of the coolest, in my opinion. Uh, and I loved her relationship with Sister Nana, of course. Shizuka just is so, so, so attractive. Um, and I think even, what was it, the light novel author said that she was meant to be the most attractive in her human form. Uh, yeah, Wise Winter Prison was completely gorgeous. I loved her power, I loved her personality and characteristics. It's just that, I don't know, with more characters, me... I think I made the first list after watching the anime. So I think after reading the light novels and getting a different look at some other characters, after going through what uh, we saw in episodes and getting new characters come in and restart, it's just that her character, compared to where other others have gone, just sort of fell back a little bit. But still, like I said, she's in front of all these characters that I said I loved in every way, so it's clear I really, really do like Weiss Winter Prison. Tenth place to me is the character that went from Wolverine to Pinocchio to Sasori uh, all over again. It's Rionetta. I loved Rionetta's design. I really felt bad for her as a character. I really, really sympathized with her. I feel like it's another one of those things like Magicaloid where I felt like everything she did that might have been bad, it was all for survival. But in addition to that, we saw Magicaloid do things for survival, but she didn't really seem like she felt remorse or anything. We got to see Rionetta, even though she did some bad stuff, 
feel really remorseful for anything that she did, all the bad stuff that she had to take part in. So for me, she's one of the more tragic characters, even though there are so many in this type of series that are tragic. She was one of the more tragic characters to me. Uh, so I loved her story. I loved her character design. I liked the end of her story a lot, but I would have also, she's one of the characters that I would have loved to have seen her live. I would have loved to have seen her survive her arc. Uh, I can say that about every character, but with Rionetta, like, seriously, if I could choose one or two more characters to survive Restart, she would be one of them. Uh, so, uh, yeah, guess that's it. Really liked Rionetta. Ninth place for me is Hardcore Alice, one of the characters that I feel the strongest for. Um, I really am so bummed that she died. Uh, she was one of my favorite characters through the anime and reading Unmarked and moving on into the future arcs, and she's kind of maintained around the same place in my list, even with these new characters coming in. She's maybe dropped a few places back than what she was before, but it gave me even more appreciation for her reading the light novels. Um, and just overall her design is awesome, her backstory is awesome, everything about her is great. I am just pretty bummed that she came in pretty late in the arc and then got killed not too long after she came in to begin with. Uh, so it's one of those things again where we didn't get to spend a lot of time with her character, but in the short time we got she, to me, when I think of the series, is one of the first characters I think of as being like the poster character for the series. Um, so yeah, it was a character I liked in every way. I'm really still bummed that we lost her, uh, and I loved everything about her in the light novels and in episodes. Uh, so yeah, that's that's it. I get him. I get. I guess I'm trying to think if there was anything more I wanted to say about the character, but I guess not. In eighth place is what I feel like might be a kind of controversial one. Melville. Melville's design is like one of the absolute best. She is so freaking cool looking. Her power is awesome. Um, one thing I really liked, I liked her accent a lot, the way she spoke with that accent, and I love the way um, that uh, Platt or Mav translated it. Uh, so I really, really liked her accent, and I liked the way that occasionally she would be bashful about her accent. I thought her personality was really, really cool, where she was just, she wanted to be the strongest. That was her whole thing. That was the way she was sort of raised. Magical Girl Raising Project, she was raised to try to be the strongest, and she needed to be the strongest and try to surpass Clamberry. And it was just that single-minded doggedness that she went after her goals, caused a lot of people to die, killed a lot of people, but not really. She didn't kill anyone. I was hoping that she would be good so, so badly because I was like, she obviously looks so much like Clamberry. They're trying to make us think she's bad. She's got to be good. And they still kind of... She isn't really bad. When you think she didn't... Throughout Restart, she didn't really ever kill anybody. Keek did. Melville didn't really do anything wrong. She just played the game. So, even though not really, she didn't even really play the game very well because she wasn't the traitor. She wasn't the demon lord. So, uh, yeah, Mel, Mel was kind of an interesting bag of, uh, bag of tricks. So, uh, I, I like the character a lot. One of my absolute favorites. That's just the only thing I regret about her is that I do think it should have turned out in the end that she was one of the good guys. But either way, I'm totally happy with the character that she is. My seventh favorite character is Detic Bell. I loved her personality, I loved her character design, everything about her, just like most of the ones I've talked about here uh, before her. But the thing with Detic Bell that moves her even further up to me is I was really, really rooting for her in Restart. All throughout Restart, she was one of the characters that I was rooting for to succeed, to win the game pretty much, more than almost anyone. So, to me, that's why Detic Bell's so high up. She's awesome in every way. I loved her role in episodes. Um, yeah, no faults at all with the character. Really, really devastated that we lost Detic. Uh, but 
a part of me didn't really think that Detic was going to survive that much anyway either. But either way, great detective waifu, rest in seventh place. My sixth favorite character is Tama, and Tama is a character that should have lived. Like, not like other characters where I'm like, oh, I really wanted them to live. No, Tama should have lived. Story-wise, it is almost a waste of her character to not have her live. Look at how influential and special Clanberry was for the story. Tama was the one that took her out that took her out. Imagine how many stories could be told if Tama would have survived. So to me it was always it was always a mistake in the first arc. She should have been like the clan tale of the first arc. She should have been the one that wasn't one of the main ones that we focused on, but she did something like take out the big bad, very similar to Clan Tale there, um, and then ends up actually surviving in the end. I after the littler bad is taken out. So I I don't know. Well, I mean, I guess Clamberry, you couldn't really consider the big bad. She wasn't even really a bad guy for most of the time in Unmarked. But either way, Tama really should have lived. Uh, and it's just a shame that we lost her. She had a great character, probably the best backstory. I'm not sure about saying that, but probably the best backstory. A great character and personality, and her power was absolutely OP. Her power was great. Um, so yeah, everything about Tama is adorable, she needs to be protected, she deserves the world, and she should have lived. So uh, yeah, either way, let's get into the top five next up. In fifth place making it into the top five is Ripple, and I actually think that in my first video, Ripple was in sixth or seventh place even, and even with the addition of new characters, his moved up. And that's because of, with reading Unmarked, I just said earlier that I thought the anime handled Snow White's development better than the light novels did. Ripple, and it's not even a question, Ripple in the light novels feels like the main character. She feels more like a main character than Snow White does. Um, her growth and development throughout Unmarked is crazy good, and she looks badass afterward, missing an eye and arm. Um, so everything about her was so, so cool, both in the anime and light novels, but the light novels just took it up to a whole other level, which made me have a newfound respect for Ripple and pushed her way, way up there. Uh, another thing, too, we see in the anime, Ripple goes commando confirmed. Maybe. So, uh, either way, jokes aside, I really liked her, and uh, she's my first character in the top five. In fourth place overall is Nemerin. Now, Nemerin is a character I love everything about her from the backstory, personality, every single thing about her character is done right. She has an extremely OP power. She's very, very reminiscent of Tama for me, where there is absolutely nothing about her that is bad in any way. In fact, everything is incredible, not even just good. Um, so there's absolutely everything is done right. She is an immortal, neat dream waifu. Uh, and yeah, I guess, really? there's nothing I can complain about. She was with us for a very, very short time, and yet I've seen her be a fan favorite too. Just in the short time that she was in the story, she was absolutely incredible. She was like the best character. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's how we ended up, and I believe she was number two in my last video, and now she's only dropped to uh, number four. But either way, Nemedin, very, very cool character. Now next up, we're getting into my top three. And for these top three, I had a really, really hard time deciding which order to put them in because any one of the three could have been number one, realistically. Uh, so I had a lot of trouble with these. But um, yeah, let's get into them. My third favorite character overall is my original favorite character. My favorite from Unmarked, she was number one in the first video, Clamberry the Forest Musician. So Clamberry to me... <laughs> Again, one of those Clamberry didn't do anything wrong kind of things. Clamberry to me was always being sort of abused and manipulated by Fob. She was, she could have very easily just been a good character, but because of the way things went, she was scarred for life because of the trauma that she went through. And then after that, instead of people helping her, instead of them making things all right, the one she had was Fob who instead made things worse and used her for his plan to make games more interesting. So 
To me, I've never really felt like Clanberry did anything that was all that wrong. That, and even during Unmarked, I feel like, yes, she did kill Lapiselle, but other than that, she killed more of the bad guys than I think either of the good guys did. I mean, maybe Ripple killed more bad guys than her, but I'm not even sure of that. Um, so yeah, she was just as much, she was just as much, if not more, of a good guy than any of the other main good guys. So, uh, to me, I've always absolutely loved Clanberry. Her design is awesome, her character is awesome, and I've always felt bad for her. I've never really felt like she was that evil. So, uh, yeah, and that means that even though she went from number one down to number three, that means there were two more characters that, even though the three are kind of close together, I managed to like them even more. My second favorite uh, character for Magical Girl Racing Project is Clantail. Now I really really thought about putting her in first and I had her in first for a while before changing my mind but uh, she has Smexy Tor powers, probably best waifu, um, and I love seeing that her powers came from her just being like a middle schooler that loves animals in real life. She is absolutely adorable, just the cutest thing ever. And I loved her personality the way she was sort of the calm, stoic, rational one within a crazy yelling group with um with uh Petchka's harem but either way I really loved not only her design or character everything about her that way but when it came to restarts probably my new favorite arc she was the MVP of the arc she was incredible in so many different ways she was the one that ended up finally taking down Melville um so yeah there was absolutely Nothing wrong with the character. Everything was amazing. MVP of an entire arc. And I'm just so happy for her. I'm happy that she got to live. And I really hope that later arcs don't change that. Um, her living is one of the happiest things in the entire series for me. And finally, my favorite character from uh, all of Magical Girl Raising Project so far is uh, Shadow Gale. Shadow Gale for me throughout Restart was the character that I feel like I'm most connected to. Um, I feel like a lot of the time I was rooting for her to win more than almost any character, though Dedic Bell is up there too. I was rooting for Dedic Bell a ton. Uh, but for me, with Shadow Gale, she echoed my thoughts a lot. Whenever I was thinking something during the arc, we would have a scene where it's her talking to Flair or whatever, and Shadow Gale either says or thinks the same thing that I was bringing up that I was thinking. So I connected a lot with the character in that way, and of course maybe it was written to be that way. Maybe she was like the fan's voice as a character. Um, but I loved her design too. I mean, you can see it up in the corners where I'm going to put it. Uh, the eyes were really cool. I like the maid outfit. Um, and overall, <laughs> overall, I was always thinking to myself, because I brought it up during Flez entry on the list, that I was like, I don't know whether Flez is going to betray her or not. And I was always scared that she was going to be betrayed. So I really, um, I don't know. I both connected with the character. I think her power and design is awesome. And I also... I uh, feel like I was rooting for her a ton. Uh, so she's my favorite character so far just because I relate to her the most. Um, but again, it was very, very close with the top three with Clanberry and Clantail there as well. Um, and I'm sorry I'm in a different uh, outfit when recording this because, um, because I lost my recording for, of course, the last girl and for the outro because my computer uh, crashed right as I was finishing up. Um, but either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like if you did like the video and comment down there to tell me what is your list. I'm really, really looking for that. I'm really, really looking forward to that. I want to know all of what you think of my list, of course, but I want to know what um, some of your favorites are and like kind of what order you might put them in maybe if you want to do that. Because uh, I'm really interested to see. I kind of feel like I know a lot of your favorites just from talking in comments and on Discord and Twitter and everything. But it'll be cool to see who some of your favorites are and how they align with my own favorites or least favorites. Because I know a lot of the ones that a lot of you like. There are some of you that like Swim Swim a lot. Um, some of you that really love um, Lapis Lazuline that wasn't too high on my list. Some of you really love um, Top Speed who isn't really high uh, on my list. And Lapis L too. So we'll see how things line up. I think that'll be a fun discussion to be had. Um, subscribe, of course, for more Magical Girl Raising Project and much, much more on the channel. 
uh, for Magical Girl Raising Project. I'm going to be doing stuff every Tuesday. This video has thrown me way, way off because it's like two weeks later than I was planning to post it. But the same week that I post this, probably a few days after this, I want to do my reaction video for the designs for Limited. And then after that, next Tuesday, from whenever this is posted, probably on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, uh, next Tuesday from this is going to be when I start with the first read-through video for Limited. Uh, pretty sure Limited's Arc 3. Hope I'm not getting that wrong. I don't believe I am, though. So uh, like I said, like, comment, subscribe. Follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. And if you want to link to our Discord server, um, just ask and I can give you a link to the Discord server. We can all talk there. So uh, that's it. Thank you once again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Um, so see you all next time.